So let's talk a little bit about trimming. Uh, it's a subject that I don't think I see too many videos on. But we'll talk about the different types of um, trimming that you can do to get your cattle ready for a show or just to have them look a little bit better. Over the tools of the trade and some of the things that we'll use, um, I am an old fart and old fashioned and I learned from people who didn't use power clippers. <laughs> so we need a good pair of hair shears. So you can get them anywhere, Walmart or, or any uh, Amazon or whatever. Uh, always have a curry comb and a soft brush with you because as you go along, sometimes the animals don't like to be clipped in certain areas. So you can take breaks of brushing them. So they should like that. And the best thing that you can do to keep your animals clean is to brush them. And maybe we'll talk about maybe some cleaning techniques after. Uh, we'll also go over horns. So having some sort of scraper, even if it's a sharp jackknife um, or a metal scraper, a paint scraper works really well. And then some level of sandpaper, Brillo pad, um, or uh, you know, uh, steel wool, something like that works fine. And then a little coarser brush for tails. And we'll go from back to front and we'll just show you some of the things that we do for them. So I don't like to body clip my cattle. So it's Oct almost October right now, so it's later in the year. So we're just gonna kind of trim them up. I've only trimmed them once um, the whole summer. So I'll show you what I do. I do little bits at a time. Uh, the most important thing is to keep them brushed out so their coats look good. That's the first thing. And I don't know whether this is true or not. I could be lying to you, but this is what I was taught, that working cattle are traditionally not body clipped. And the reason for that is nature put the coat on them for a reason and it's to protect their skin and to protect their bodies. And if we're outside in the elements and working with the cattle, it gives some level of protection against those elements. It's not like a dairy cow um, or other types of uh, animals that you might show where you want to see the lines and you're worried about milk veins and seeing all of that stuff which the body clipping exposes. It's a kind of a different thing. Not to say that it's wrong. Um, you can body clip them early in the uh, season. Just make sure you do it early enough in case you are showing so that any imperfections from body go into the tail, we'll go into the body and then work our way up to the head. So using scissors, and you could use clippers if you wanted, but you find where the short hairs end and the long hairs begin and you just move them up, you kind of brush them backwards and you can kind of get an idea of where the swish starts and the regular hairs stop. And the first thing that we're going to do is cut around the circumference of the bottom of the tail just to make a delineation and a point where we'll fade that up. So now I've got that cut around there and it looks funny. So what we're going to do is we're going to start blending that in. Oh, oh, stand. We're going to start blending that in all the way up to the top of the tail head here. But before we do that, if you look up here, even this is the key. So I've got a lot of hairs sticking up. So I'm gonna constantly be looking at areas where I can just take these high spots off, Stan. And I don't care what you're doing, whether you're driving your animals or you're trimming them, if they misbehave or you want them to do something, make sure that you give them a command. Don't just push them around. Okay, and then push this back and try to get it down as even as possible. The thing is to get all of the hairs that are sticking up nice and smooth. And again, you can do this with electric clippers, but you do have a little bit more control with scissors too. So we'll start with the rump area and then head back to the tail here in a second. Look at all of these high spots and make sure that they're nice and trimmed. So now we're gonna even up the tail and we're gonna blend it in a little bit. We're gonna party like it's 1926, which is when I think these are patented again. You can use power uh, clippers, but I just have these because I'm a history geek and I have oxen so I think it's kind of cool so basically what we're gonna do is just start even evening this up from that line that we cut around the bottom of the tail and we're gonna work our way all the way up we can bring this up so you can see the high spots and the long hairs and just take your time like anything the, the key is is maintenance so if you do this on a regular basis and they get used to it then it's very easy to maintain this through the show season mm -hmm. okay so we went up with our old-fashioned clippers got the big stuff taken down now we're just going to taper that tail down as we get up closer to the top we may just use the scissors and take off some of these and we'll keep doing that until we get it as even as we can and back brushing it like this will also kind of expose stand those 
tie points. Again, looking at any cowlicks or anything like that, getting those trimmed up. Could be along the back of the legs, around the dew claws, around the hoof, depending on how much hair your animal has around there. You can just trim it right around and make it nice and even. I'm not going to worry about him because he has pretty short hair there anyway. Um, but again, it's just about smoothing it out and making it look good and then doing a little bit at a time and you can avoid body clipping by doing that. So let's move to a little bit forward. Uh, we'll talk about the back line around the middle of the animal, the sheath and underneath as well. So we'll start with his back line and these guys hair is pretty short anyway, but if we wanted to kind of trim this up all the way down in the, from back to front, we could. I'm not gonna go crazy with it. You could scissor cut it, you could power clip it, whatever. Looking down here, Okay, obviously we've got some longer hairs that we can trim there and just make a little bit more even. But we wanna make sure that we cut all the sheath hair. So if we grab the middle, don't cut the poor guy, but get that middle piece off and then trim all the way around here, get all the, hair, top, the uh, long hairs off. That's something that the judge is going to look at it needs to be nice and even and smooth. And just clean it up a little bit. When you start working up to his shoulders and his neck area, again, maybe wives tail, but along with, you know, there's a reason why that, that oxen are not traditionally body clipped. There was also a reason why we don't usually touch the hair up here. And some of the old timers would say that the animal's hair on their neck would give some level of cushion against the yoke. So they, they would really uh, shy away from having us touch that um, or even trim it. So you can take some of the, the long hairs off, but I don't usually touch that too much either. Now, the next thing is the dewlap. So as we're moving forward to the front of the animal toward, towards their head, obviously we want to make sure that his dewlap, this is an area where he'd have some long hairs sticking out. So we're going to even this up all the way to the bottom. So we're moving our way up to uh, the horns and the pole area as long as the as well as the ears so again don't know wives tail whatever what i was told and uh, the way that i've always done it and it makes sense is you know part of what a judge is going to be looking for is cleanliness of the ears but you don't want to take all of this hair out you could even it out okay so that it's cut nice and straight but again nature dictates that that hair has a job and part of its job is to keep as many of the flies out of their ears as possible. So just kind of evening it up just so that there's, there's no stragglers or anything. And then evening, evening it up around the outside of their ears, uh, again, because they get kind of shaggy, you can do that as well. Just be really careful, especially if you have a, a uh, sharp pair of scissors, you don't want to cut them obviously. And then when we move to the pole and the horns, before I even start cleaning horns, what we're going to do is we're going to expose a little bit more of the horn and we're going to cut around it. And this is another thing where you can create some optical illusions. If you have a little bit of a difference in horn size where one is longer, one is uh, shorter, depending on the animal, the differences between your two animals, um, you can kind of adjust how long the horn actually looks if you really want to get picky with a judge uh, by how much you cut the hair. So. What we're going to do is we're going to start like we did at the bottom of the tail and we're going to cut a circumference around the horns all the way around being very careful around their eyes obviously stand and this is something if they need a break you need to brush them a little bit obviously you do that so that we don't cause any problems or too much stress on them because sometimes they don't like their haircut so we're going to take that and we're going to go all the way around brushing it out making sure that we get this as even as possible. You don't have to go right up to where their horn meets their head. Uh, you can leave a little bit of space, but the main thing is to make it even and to really show off their horn and to make it even from side to side as well. So then on his pole and his forehead, we're gonna just kind of trim the hair up just like you would at the, at the barber shop. And you could do it with the clippers as well. We're just doing it with the with the scissors, and if you see any stray hairs, just kind of clip them. We're just going to make it as even as possible. Stand and taking our taking our time and kind of cleaning this up. And then 
So I got the best, his uh, pole as best as I could. You can see I just tried to even it out. Come on, look at me. Again, we didn't shave it all the way down. Still got a little bit of high spots there, but you do a little bit at a time. Around the horns really cleans it up. That's what makes it look nice. And then trimming just evenly around the ears and making sure that you cut a nice straight line in there without taking all the hair off. Uh, the first step, and this is an ongoing thing, is scrape off all of the high spots in the scales. Um, if you're going to use a knife, be very, very careful, obviously, in case they move. A paint scraper works really well for this as well, and or even just a, a metal wood scraper works well. So the idea is to get any of the high spots off and just kind of scrape around all, all sides of the horn. And then once you've scraped all the high spots off, take some sandpaper to it, and you just repeat this over a season until you get them as smooth as possible, and you can finish them a couple different ways. You can use... Uh, horn polish or hoof polish. Um, baby oil works well. You want something maybe to moisturize the, the horns a little bit and that might keep them from cracking as well. Um, we used to use Crisco or lard on them too. You can use that if you'd like and that'll bring out the shine as well. But when you're showing them and you're prepping them for a class, when you put something on their horn or on their hoof, you don't want to go too crazy. You want to wipe off any excess. They don't want to be oily look nice take out the uh, bring out the natural color of the, the horn and that's about all you want okay so we've done a little bit of sanding we haven't gone crazy but again a little bit at a time over a season this is where it makes a difference um, take a, a rag we'll put a little bit of Crisco or or baby oil kind of clean off all of the dirt on his horns wipe off any excess And then you'll see that that brings out the color. And as long as, if you're in a show, a little bit goes a long way. You don't have to go crazy. And you don't want it greasy or oily. You just want it clean. And the, and the uh, color to come out of it. So, stand. So you can see that, again, just doing a little bit, it made a difference. It looks a lot cleaner, a lot smoother. I lost my cameraman, but one other thing is the tail swish. You want to take some time to brush that out. Grab it by the center hairs, hang it straight up, and then tease it out and brush it backwards. Give it a little bit of volume, and it makes it look a little bit nicer. So after you uh, clean them especially, that'll look good. So let's do a quick walk around. So we've got the tail kind of evened up. Hopefully you can remember what that looked like before. Nice even taper down to the bottom. A good distinction between the long hairs and the short hairs. We've gone and we've taken off most of the high spots just with scissors. Didn't do anything crazy. Of course, he's gonna start peeing. Cleaned his sheath off. Okay, so that's nice and even. Big thing, this is horns. Trimming around those horns, sanding them, scraping them down, putting a little bit of something on them to take the color out of them and make them look a little cleaner and trimming his pole and you know forehead area and really between the head and the tail that's where you see a big difference and then just trimming down everything so it's even between combine this with keeping them nice and clean um, a trick for white cattle i just again i'm cheap so i use the cheapest thing that i could find for cleaning them maybe it's right maybe it's wrong i'll just use just a normal soap or shampoo um, any large animal um, shampoo and all of the white spots we spray down with OxyClean, just like what you would do with your clothes to keep the whites clean. We let that soak in, we brush it in, let it sit for 10 minutes or so, and then rinse it out. And it's a cheap and effective way to keep the whites white on white cattle. Now, if you had a completely white animal, you may not want to do that, but that's good for, for spots or lines or anything like that. So he's looking pretty good. We cleaned and trimmed his ears as well. So again, that's it. Keep up a little bit of time. If you wait till the last minute, try to do everything. It's not going to look good. So um, go throughout the season and trim a little bit at a time. That's the biggest thing.